is Clarence L. Kelly Johnson, a man perhaps not all that well known to the general public, but one whose status within the aircraft industry is legend. Revered by his peers and honored by four presidents, Johnson's design genius led to the creation of more than 40 aircraft, many of them among the best known in the world. Throughout a career that spanned more than 50 years, Johnson built his reputation by going beyond what was then thought possible. In the late 1930s, he produced what would become one of the most famous fighting machines of World War II, the P-38 Lightning. The plane flown by America's top two vessels. During those same turbulent times, he molded a small group of dedicated engineers, scientists, and craftsmen into Lockheed's Advanced Development Projects Organization better known as the Skunk Works. Led by Johnson's designs and innate aeronautic acumen, this hand-picked team was instrumental in initiating the jet age with the introduction of the P-80 Shooting Star, America's first operational jet fighter. Through the subsequent years, Johnson then went on to fashion such notable achievements as the T-33 T-Bird, which at one time was responsible for the training of over 90% of the free world's jet pilots. The F-104 Starfighter, a radically different aircraft. This sleek jet fighter was the first interceptor to exceed Mach 2. The famous triple-tailed constellation, for its time, one of the most advanced propeller-driven transports of the 1940s and early 50s. The Jetstar, which pioneered personalized executive jet travel. And nearly 40 other notable aircraft, each a unique expression of the creativity of its design. Yet for all of his varied accomplishments, many of which still remain classified, Johnson is probably best known for the creation of two very special aircraft, the U-2 and the SR-71 Blackbird. Combining slide rule technology with equal portions of experience and foresight, Johnson's U-2 design was a radical departure from anything than flying. From the moment of its first operational flight in 1956, the U-2 exceeded the difficult requirements of its demanding reconnaissance mission. Indeed, so proficient did the U-2 prove to be, both in its military roles and as a tool of science for NASA, that 12 years after the last U-2 came off the assembly line, production was resumed with a newer, more sophisticated version, designated the TR-1. Standing in mute testimony to the value of Johnson's original design, this was the first time in Air Force history that an aircraft had been put back into production. Taking its place with the Strategic Air Command, the TR-1 continued the U-2's unmatched 30-year career as the highest flying single-engine aircraft in the world. Perhaps Johnson's greatest achievement, though, is the SR-71 Blackbird, a strategic reconnaissance aircraft unparalleled for purpose and design. Evolved in the late 1950s, the Blackbird may also have been Johnson's greatest challenge. Nearly everything that went into its construction had never been done before. Titanium forgings that had to withstand temperatures of over 600 degrees. The hydraulic system, the engines, a life support system befitting a space traveler. Emergency escape requirements that could operate at altitudes above 100,000 feet.
Everything from its tires to the top of the canopy was designed and built especially for the Blackbird. The net result was an aircraft without peer or rival. Operating at speeds in excess of Mach 3, a Blackbird can literally outrace a bullet, cross the length of a football stadium in the blink of an eye, or pass from Washington, D.C. to Los Angeles in just over an hour. With twin power plants developing more thrust than 45 diesel locomotives, its missions are fulfilled at the upper reaches of the stratosphere, where multiple sensors gather millions of bits of information with each pass. Today, over 20 years after its birth, Johnson's remarkable SR-71 is still the world's premier reconnaissance plane and one of the most sophisticated ever built. The ultimate tribute to a man who began drawing plans for flying machines as a boy of 12 and went on to become one of aviation's greatest designers.